Welcome to the Photoshop lesson that will show you how to create a grayscale effect while you maintain color for part of an image. If you look at this before and after picture, you can see what the results are going to be in the after part of this lesson. So let's go ahead and we're going to open up the image in Photoshop and we're going to get started. If you don't have your history window or your swatches, you probably won't need swatches for this, or your layers window, you go to the window section to open up those windows. With that said, we can go ahead and get started. Now in this particular example, we're going to create a square from this image. So I'm going to go ahead and access the Tools window. I will click on the rectangular marquee. If it's not showing, it's because it's hidden behind one of these other tools. So with that selected, I'm going to make sure the feather is set to zero. Notice at the top, if this feather wasn't showing, you would need to make sure that your Windows Options is selected. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and click down and I'm going to hold the shift key to make a perfect square. I'll let go and then I'm going to go ahead and move this and what's ever inside of that square, when I go to image crop, it will crop out everything but what I want. Now that it's cropped, I'm going to save the original because what I'm trying to do is I'm going to get a before and an after image. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to save that file, save for web, and you're either going to save it as a JPEG or a GIF. The general rule of thumb is for photographs, you pretty much save it as a JPEG. So we're going to keep it as a JPEG and we're going to say save and we'll go ahead and put it somewhere safe on the computer. For now, I'm just going to put it on my desktop. I'll call it Girl 1. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the lasso tool. Now some might choose to use the magnetic lasso. I'm going to use the lasso tool. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to start dragging and I'm not letting go on the mouse and I'm dragging, I'm doing a really horrible job, but that's okay. And I'm dragging around so that I can select the girl. And I'm going to drag across along the bottom so that I can have a selection. And now what I'm going to do is Control C, which is the shortcut for copy. So Control C, and I'm going to choose File New. Make sure it says RGB color. Say OK and do Control V, which is the shortcut for paste. Now what I'm going to do is I'll come back to this image. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that selection now by going to Select, Deselect, and I'm going to go to Image Mode and I'm going to set it to grayscale. You can say discard in this case. Now if I were to go over here and in the Layers window, if I click on the girl, the color, colorful girl and drag it, notice it's still grayscale. So why don't I do Control Z to get rid of that. I'll go back to this image and make sure on the grayscale, notice it says gray at the top, you don't want that. You want to go back to image mode and set it to RGB. Now when we go back to the colorful girl and we click on that layer and we drag it over to the gray image, she's in color. Now what I'm going to do is use the move tool to move her. Now if you can't tell if you're totally on top of it, you could always go to the Layers window and make the opacity as opaque as possible. Notice it's not lined up really good. So you can do it and, and line it up that way if you want. You can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard. Now that looks lined up. I will go back and set it to 100% opacity. Now what you want to do is you want to come back to this image. Well, on the Colorful Girls layer, you use the Eraser tool. You can come over. If you don't like the size of the eraser, you can always right click and change the eraser size. But I want it to be pretty small. I don't care so much about the hardness right now. So I'll come in. And if you want, you can always click on the zoom tool and zoom in to get a close up. Now, if, if for some reason, if you look at the options, if it were set to minus and you use the zoom tool, it's going to make it small. So make sure the plus sign is clicked on so that you can zoom in. Now if I hold down the space bar of the keyboard and notice a little hand pops up, I can move it any way I want. That way you can work close up, which is really handy when you're working with Photoshop. So go ahead and you're going to want to clean that up as best as possible. And then I'm going to go ahead and hold the shift key, I'm sorry, the space key, and I'm going to keep getting rid of that around her hair so that it's just her that's sticking out. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and I'll be right back. So I think I've erased pretty much everything. I'm going to go click on View and choose Actual Pixels to see what it looks like. And it looks marvelous. 
I want to point something out before I conclude this session. If, for example, you made a mistake, notice how I made three mistakes just now. You can do Control Z, but you can only do it one time in Photoshop. So what you want to do is you go back to the history window, and if you start going backwards, you can get to the point where you need to be. Now I'm going to go ahead and save this, File Save for Web. I'll save it as a JPEG, and I'll call this Girl 2. And that concludes the session on creating a colorful image with a grayscale background. Until next time, you have a fabulous day.